The video you're about to watch has been designed to take you deeper, higher, and wider into Yahweh. Enjoy, and please subscribe. Thank you. So I'm excited. Of course, we have the conference coming on, which is uh, on Saturday. I'm very excited about that. I don't know why. Well, I know why, because God wants to do some extremely extraordinary things. And again, I also want to go as far as to say it's not the season for the ecstasy. And I know that everybody is not uh, in par, uh, uh, online with this specific revelation. But it's not so much about the signs and the wonders in this season as what it is about engaging the heavens. It's what it is about going into who the Father is, getting to know Him, love Him. To begin to legislate as we operate in the Spirit, as we begin to do things in the Spirit, we begin to understand what it means. And when I say Spirit, please remind yourself that I'm talking about the Kingdom of Heaven. Because there's a spirit realm within the earth that we've engaged for many, many years and it's affected us. Uh, it's not the spirit realm that the Father has wanted us to engage. It's being in the kingdom. It's understanding Paul saying, I was caught up into the third heaven. Understanding that it is the full supply of heaven that the Father has wanted us to live out of. And that's what we've been doing in spirit school for the last couple of years. As a matter of fact, uh, spirit school has been going on for about five years. And that's how long I've been in America. That's how long we've been doing spirit school. We started in New Orleans. And the idea of spirit school is to get you as a spirit being to be activated and to grow and to be matured. Um, and of course to understand that we have access into the kingdom of heaven. That we no longer wait for his presence. We no longer wait for him to come. Um, not that that's not a good idea. It's always a good idea to wait for him to come. But his desire for us is to begin to believe and understand that we can go there. And as we go to receive the revelation and insight, to receive the knowledge that we need to legislate things into the earth. We also begin to understand that the creation has been waiting for sons and daughters to be ignited, to wake up, to mature. Yes. And of course, now that we are slowly but surely beginning to mature, we understand that we only mature going into the kingdom of heaven. We don't mature on this side of the veil. On this side of the veil, we receive wisdom and knowledge, things that we can see, read, study, meditate, things that we can be taught by man that studied by man that studied by man. But going in beyond the veil, we're receiving revelation from out of Zion. Uh, right straight up from Yahweh, from Him speaking to us as we engage with Him, as we worship and magnify Him face to face. We begin to understand that through the understanding we've had over the years that death is our Savior, meaning we have to die to be holy, we have to die to meet with Him, we have to die to see Him. Over the last couple of years with the Spirit School, we've begun to realize that we have, according to the Word of God, we can go in now. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ today. We don't have to die. Our body can be glorified. Our spirit can be glorified. Our soul can be glorified. We, uh, looking at Yeshua, engaging Yeshua, can become glorified beings. Now, is there many walking the earth glorified? No. But are we about to change? Are we about to ignite in what the Father is releasing? Yes. Why? Because there's a company of people that is engaging. There's a company of people that wants to go higher, deeper, wider into Him. And so the Father is longing for that level of intimacy. You know, we've been the bride for long enough. And I always say that, and I know the church gets angry with me because we still want to believe that we're going to be the bride. But it's just a level. It's a level of growth. And we're beginning to understand that. And as we begin to understand that that level of growth has shifted because I cannot be the bride stepping in beyond the veil. Because when I step beyond the veil, everything changes. Everything becomes a different reality. Because I look upon Yahweh and I begin to understand that God is not my father per se. I am to be one with Him. We are to become one. We are co -ed. We are a family, a unit that operates together. Within Him, there's space for me. It has always been created and designed like that when He said, In the beginning, let us create. That was Him saying, I am the beginning and everything that you see came out of me and I need everything that I created in my image. There's only one being, one species, me and you, to come back into me. So the whole idea behind everything we do is to go back into the fullness and to understand that we live and move and have our being in Him. So things change. I become the body. I no longer operate as a bride. And of course the Ecclesia needs to begin to understand that. 
We need to begin to walk in that in its full capacity because as the body, I no longer have my own will. I no longer make my own choices. I no longer do my own thing. I am, I have him as my head. He is my covering. He is my all in all. I run in through him. He gives me wisdom, revelation, knowledge. I have his mind. I have his heartbeat. I have his blood flow. I operate against and in the light as he is the light because I am the body and he is the head. And so the idea of what we're doing is that we begin to legislate the things that we've walked in and seen and experienced over the last five years. For me, it's been seven, but really, um, uh, and again, I say it's been seven years. It sounds, wow, you've been doing this for a very long time. Because there's no real handbook in this, it isn't something that you can say, well, I've been in it for seven years, I now know what I'm doing. Because there's so much revelation. You know, we're talking about an infinite God that is almighty in power and revelation and knowledge. And, and uh, 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 um, a God that's not created. He has no beginning. He has no end. And in our natural minds, that's not something we can fathom. A God that's so big in, 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 in infancy that we can't even look upon Him in our natural capacity. We have to literally legislate uh, from out of the kingdom of heaven the... Um, Sure, that was intense. We have to legislate from out of the kingdom of heaven the, the change that's needed for our bodies to come in alignment with who Yahweh is and who we are in Him. Because we can't understand the things the Spirit wants to know. We don't understand the things that the soul, of what, what the Spirit wants to pour into the soul. The things that my spirit engaged in, in the kingdom of heaven, my, my natural body and soul can still not perceive it because it was born into uh, the worldly system and the worldly way of understanding and perceiving things. So there's so much that needs to change in us and of course we are freaked out by it. And slowly but surely the Father wants us to begin to understand how deep we need to go in. So what I'm going to try and do tonight is I want to, I want to talk about stumbling blocks that, that uh, prevents us from progressing in the heavenly realms. Now we've been doing what I call spirit school for a long time. I guess, yeah, it's about two and a half years. The original spirit school in New Orleans has been going for a little bit less than five years. Uh, so the school in, uh, um, uh, in Lafayette has been going for a little bit more than two and a half years, almost three years. Um, some of the schools have closed, some have reopened, um, like the Denham Springs, and uh, um, the Denham Springs closed due to the flooding, and it reopened again. It went on for quite a while, then we changed it for every six weeks where I actually go into the church and minister there. And that's been going on for a long time. The, 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 the um, Denham Spring Church is actually the mother church that brought us into the country. Um, there's so much. Uh, we've got Covington, we've got um, Homa, which is all new schools. Uh, we've got uh, the, the, the Baton Rouge School, which is a weekly school, which is also brand new. So there's a lot of repetition for me. And of course, those listening on Facebook and YouTube, there's a lot of repetition because I have to go through everything again from the beginning when I'm on the, in, in the schools. But the Father has taught me from the beginning to record everything so that you can call, find yourself going back. And of course, every time I minister on something I've ministered on before, there's a higher dimension of revelation that comes out of it because it comes out of a higher place of, of, of deepness for the Father. So what I'm going to try and do tonight is I'm going to try and go through the things that we need to kind of focus on to constantly find ourselves going to a deeper and a higher place. Because it's easy to say, well, this stuff doesn't work for me. I'm not interested anymore. It's just, I'm just going to stick to the old way of doing things. And that's a problem. That's a problem because the Father has given you a doorway to go to a higher place with Him. And He longs for that intimacy now. One of the long-standing long mandates from the Lord has always been to remove stumbling blocks out of the way of God's people. It's always His desire for us to understand the smooth path that He sees when He looks at us. But because of the things we decide to do, because of Satan wanting to kill, steal, and destroy, and because of us going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, flesh, spirit, flesh, spirit, flesh, spirit, there's always something blocking our way. So the Father kind of wants to clean that out. We understand that there's some uh, stumbling blocks that uh, we can discern in the heavenly realms that can or are stopping people from entering fully into the Holy of Holies. So what we want to try and do for each individual is to kind of break those things up into smaller portions so we can begin to focus on them if there's a blockage in your life. Now, it's, not, it's, it's not sin. So don't misunderstand what we're doing tonight with, 
with sin or something that's in your life that hinders you from going in. It's just uh, small little things we do in our day-to-day -day lives that can prevent us from going in. You can choose, uh, like I said, you can choose two or, or, or maybe more of these things just to engage on a weekly basis to kind of get it smoothed out in your life. And then you can come back to this teaching every now and then to see what else you need to remove. Of course, you want to take these things to the courts um, that will help you move forward. Now, remind yourself that I've got these videos on YouTube for you to go back to. Uh, Apostle um, uh, Ball and his wife, they sell the, the, the DVD, the CDs here. Yeah, I think it's like $3. And so you can come back there, you can buy them. And I know that they've got them on record, so you can buy them and keep on listening to them as often as you possibly can, if you don't already have them. That's the idea. For me personally, I had to listen to my mentors over and over and over again. You have to remind yourself that this is the changing of the belief system. We have been programmed by the ecclesia, not out of ignorance, not out of stupidity, not out of because they want to deceive us, because, uh, because we have been trained to believe certain things. Because that was the, the season and the time that we were in. Now much of the church is holding on to what we've had instead of moving on. We have chosen to move on. So in our moving on, we need to change a lot of the things that we've believed up to this point. Always look at how far you have come through and celebrate your progress to experience the joy. You know, you look at yourself a year ago and you think, Nothing is happening, nothing is changing, I'm struggling to go in. But a year before that, you didn't even know you could go in. You know, so there's already so much that's changed, and we don't always see that. So what I would suggest you do is always step out of yourself. That's the, 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 the bonus of being a spirit being that can step out of my soul and my body, and I can look at my soul and my body, I can look at my life and where I'm at and what I do from a different perspective. Once I can look at something from a different perspective, I can see what's wrong and what needs to change. Now for me, seven years ago, I couldn't do that. I had to go to my mentors. I had to go to my, my, my senior pastor of the church. I had to go to my pastor that I was assistant to and say, okay, so what needs to change in my life? Because I couldn't particularly see what was the problem. You know, of course, we have wives and husbands and children that can very easily show us exactly what's wrong, right, which is a bonus. But if I can, as a spirit being, step out of myself and look at me uh, operating in my daily life and see what is my issues and my problems, what's blocking me from going in, there's a, a better idea there to propel me to a higher, deeper place, right? One of the things we need to focus on is complacency. It will get you... Um, it will get to... Uh, I will get to it someday... But uh, <laughs> that day never comes very often. You know, sometimes you do a corporate engagement and it's mind-blowing. You come to spirit school and you have this great time. We do some ascension. We do something in the spirit and you can feel it and you experience it. Even while you're listening to a teaching, you see it, you feel it, your spirit's all excited about it. But when you get home, you say to yourself, I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. And that doesn't come. Um, what you might find yourself doing, I'll just read the Bible like I always do. I'll just pray like I always do instead of engaging. So becoming complacent with what you know you shouldn't do or you know you should do but never getting to it is definitely something that will block you from working deeper or going deeper in. Not working in our weakest uh, gateways and only going through the same gateway all the time. Uh, for me personally, I had to find multiple amounts of ways of getting into the kingdom of heaven. And so what I've done over the last couple of years, and I've shared this many times, is for example, I will, when I sit down in a chair, I will say in my natural mind, I'm sitting on my throne. When I go into a room, I'll say I'm going into the mountain of the Lord. It's a conscious awareness of what my spirit's busy doing, although I can't always see what my spirit's doing or where my spirit's going. And the idea is to find yourself activating through small things in your day-to-day -day life, how you're going in. If I put my shirt on, I'm cleaning clothes in Christ. 
If I step into another room, I'm stepping into a chamber. I'm stepping into a courtroom. I'm stepping into another dimension. I'm going in to the throne room. I'm going in where the Father is. I see myself standing at the edge of, of, of the stairs. Before I start going down, I'm standing at the edge of creation with the Father busy creating. It's just uh, visual things I do in the natural that can engage the spirit. And of course, the idea is to go back to your old engagements. Things that you experienced before you could go beyond the veil. Like visions. Things that you see. I remember uh, before I had kiddies, uh, myself and my wife, we would just uh, go to church on Sunday because we already planted a church with my senior, with my pastor in our mother church. And I would find myself in worship just sitting, um, folded, legs folded, and I would just, almost like in a meditate state, I would just sit and I would find myself walking on the beach with Yeshua. I remember at that age, at that, at that stage, we still, I still believed that I was the bride and I had to marry him. And I would find myself just sitting there. He would come in and he would, he would present the ring to me and say that he wants to marry me. Uh, and it was just this intimate time with him. Now, those are old ways and an old thing that I don't particularly believe anymore. But that's still a trigger for me. You know, to have that dimension of intimacy, to have that door open, to go in, to walk with him on the beach, to get to know him. So any place that you have engaged, you can use as a trigger. But the idea is not just to have the same gateways used all the time. And then, of course, you have to also remind yourself, you have to go back in your, in your timeline to deal with, with your weakest gateway. It could be your body. It could be your soul. Most of the time, it's our soul and the different aspects of your soul, especially your imagination and focus. Because the imagination and focus is the primary keys for you to go in. I can have my imagination active and activated, but if my focus is not steady and uh, um, uh, uh, intentful, it's not going to allow me to go into the measure that I can. And uh, the idea is to bring that focus into place. Okay. The more, the more that are open, the greater our sight and progress. Remind yourself, you have to open your gates. We did the gates here already, so for you it would be a good idea to go back to understand the gates and look at your life and see what gates are shut, what gates needs to be aligned, what needs to change your life. Because the more gates are open, the more doorways there is for you to go in, the easier it will be to have and to get access to go to the kingdom of heaven. Now, the idea is, and this is the, 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 the I would just go as far as to say the perfect state, for me, I've been going in so often over the last seven, seven years that there's many gateways. I can, my favorite gateway is my very first encounter. But I can't use that one all the time because I don't want to start at the same point. So the idea is to then, uh, instead of using the same one because it's my favorite one, to go to some of the other ones. Sometimes I would have driven in the streets on my way to one of the meetings and I would have had an engagement with the angelic. So I would go back into the spirit to that point where I engaged with an angel while I was driving in my car, meaning that my soul and my body is active in the car driving, and my spirit's left my body, gone out and engaged with an angel. And I can go back to that encounter where I can stand back and see where the angel came from, the gateway that he used, and I can go in there with and engage at the same level as what he's at or where he came from. So the idea is to just constantly find yourself going back to find the gates that's open for you. Remind yourself that the Father's desire for you as a spirit being is to go into the kingdom of heaven, to spend intimate time with Him. It's all about intimacy. It's all about getting to know Him. Because in engaging with one of the seven spirits or one of the, whichever angelic being, whichever created being you engage with, whether it's saints of old, whether it's men in white linen, whether it's the 22 letters, whether it's the 24 elders, whether it's the four living creatures, whatever you engage in the heavens, worship unto Him. And His desire for us is just to go in. And obviously understand and go from there. <coughs> we could be overwhelmed because of it being so much new revelation. How many of you felt like that? It's just too much. I don't know where to start. It's like trying to read the Bible. You know, if someone can't direct me, I remember when I just started as a Christian, I would read some, yeah, I would read some there, but really in essence, nothing actually made sense. Until someone told me, as I went to Bible school, they said, well, why don't you start with John? Don't, don't start with Matthew because the first chapter is going to drive you nuts. With all the genealogy of, of, of the, you know, you can't even read or pronounce most of those names. So the first chapter is going to go, and you're not going to want to read on. So start with an easy book. Start with a book that you can understand. So it just makes sense. 
So it's the same with this. Don't let the revelation overshadow you. Um, take a portion and run with that. But I mean, over the last couple of years here, yeah, we've had so much teachings coming in. But if you sit back, there's a lot of repetition. Because it's a belief system that has to change. It's something you have to listen and hear over and over again. So I understand that the revelation is overwhelming, but the Father's desire for you is to sit back, step into Him, and remind yourself it's in Him where there's rest. It's in Him where there's peace. This uh, does pass eventually, and our hunger grows if we keep wanting more. Don't forget that your IQ, which I love, this is my favorite part, your IQ also increases from going into heaven. And this is just logic, because you're activating another portion of who you are that's never been activated. Now, we understand that we get born again, or we get born from above, and then I have another dimension of my being activated and active in my life. So where I was soul and body with a spirit that gave life, I now have spirit, soul, and body. But as I take my spirit into the kingdom of heaven, I start engaging with where I come from as an ancient being. There's an activation of a dimension of wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and insight that I did not have previously. Because it's engaged, as it's infused knowledge that's uh, then being transfused into your soul and your body that increases the knowledge you have up to the point that you're at. It changes everything. Not being willing to pay the cost or getting distracted by life. This is a, a, a key to everybody. Uh, we need to understand, and even for myself. Um, in the beginning, I used to wake up uh, at 5 o'clock and I would spend time with Yahweh between, between 5 and 8, almost every morning for years and years and years. Eventually, I felt that I didn't have to do that anymore and uh, I, because I have had it kind of locked into my system and I knew that I can even engage during the day. But there's certain, certain things we have to do in the beginning that we might not want to do. It will cost you because this is not a uh, this is not something that's just going to come to you. It's not going to be ta da. It's not going to happen like that. Oh come on, Gustav, are you serious? Can it just be like that? Can someone just lay hands on me? You know, I, I love being la having hands laid on, but it doesn't work the way we want it to work. Never has, never will, and it's not designed to either. It's something we made up because we are part of a takeaway. Um, generation. So we believe that if someone, great man of God, comes and lay hands on me, and he's going to impart something into my body, and instantly I am going to know everything. Walk in a new level of revelation and knowledge and insight. But I mean to understand, I've had my, I've been, I've had hands laid on me from the date of my, my, my born again state to where I am today by, of the greatest man of God that's ever walked the face of the earth. Now, has, did it change my life? Yes. Just to engage with them, just to be touched by them, just to have that, that anointing poured over you, yes, it's great. But it's not something that just now all of a sudden I don't have to do anything. It's just imparted into me and I'm going to become everything that they are. No, no, it's just an activation and it means I now need to work even harder to get to where I want to be according to what I've seen someone else walk in. Exciting, right? Focusing on intimacy, doing things in rest and knowing our scroll and what part we are designed to make, makes the cost seem very small. See, if it's all about works and you don't know where you're going, you're going to find yourself freaked out. But when you have a destination, when you have an understanding of where you mean to, mean to go, then everything kind of changes. The first thing I really wanted to focus on after the Father started taking me deeper into the kingdom of heaven is what's on my scroll. Because I started feeling in my understanding that what I'm doing when I minister to people as a preacher wasn't right. Now I preached biblical principles, it wasn't in the sermons, it, was, it wasn't in the prophecies because the prophecies have always been accurate, I've been always very powerful in their prophecies and what the Father has given me. It wasn't in praying for the sick and, and, and raising the dead, although we've done all of that. It was that, that thing, those things I did, I only did because it's what I was taught to do. I didn't know that I wasn't meant to, to do it in that manner. When I saw my scroll, the entire ministry changed. Now, do I have a problem with laying on our hands, praying over, over, over people? Have I, do I have a problem with, with prophesying over the whole congregation? No, I don't. 
I did that for years. But for me personally, when I saw my scroll, the desire to do that kind of faded. Do I still prophesy over people? Absolutely. Not like I used to, but I still do. And I know the value of it. And I need you to understand there's great value in the gifts. But there is a higher dimension that the Father wants the Ecclesia to step into. It's a deeper, higher, wider place. Exciting, right? We have this un understanding that when I go in, I have to see everything. Let me explain to you. I promise you that the kingdom of heaven uh, is not possible for you to have seen everything yet. You know, Ian Clayton talks about him being in doing this for 38 years. And then he remains, he talks about when he's sitting with his kids around the table and his, the son says to him, Dad, you know that place? I went there today in the spirit. And he's like, no, I've never seen that place. Yeah, so though there's, it's just multitude. It is uh, an infinite place that we can't even express a plan. Now, of course, we begin to understand as we go in, there's cities. Within the cities, <coughs> there's different realms. Within the realms, there's different, different dimensions. There's just so much that opens up as we go deeper into Him that we can't put it in a box or begin to understand everything because this is an infinite God that has no beginning, that has no end. So we're never going to experience or understand everything at once. But engage the portion that you're busy with so the Father can reveal the mystery to you. Because that's really what it's about. It's Him revealing mysteries and secrets to us as we engage. Remind yourself constantly that this is your Father. It is your Daddy. It's your Creator. He wants to bless you. He wants to show you everything He created for you and why He created for you and who you are in Him and who He is in you. Hearing and discerning in the Spirit is still a valid way to walk with God. Remind yourself that although this is not the way we were taught, when I step into the Spirit, I see Yahweh. I wasn't taught that. When I see Him face to face, I see His lips move when He speaks to me. I wasn't taught like that. You know, I have to change the way that I was taught now because I now say I see him, I walk with him, I touch him, he speaks to me audibly, not, not by oh, hello, good stuff, how are you doing, but in the understanding that he is one and I, with me and I am one with him. Knowing that I don't have to speak out loud to myself, hey hand, don't you want to scroll up the iPad? I don't have to do that. My body knows what my mind is wanting it to do without having to say it. And that's the communication that takes place in the kingdom of heaven because I'm the body and he's the head. And we begin to understand that, that hearing and discerning in the spirit is still valid because now it comes out of a high place in Christ, seated in heavenly places. Not applying knowledge by going into heaven. This, uh, leads to lack, uh, um, this leads to a lack of confidence and inhabits seeing as it becomes head knowledge. This is something you have to understand at a very early progress because this is not something you engage with what you know. We engage it with your faith because there's not a book I can go read before I go in. Well, I don't want to be deceived. I, I don't want to do this because it doesn't sound right to me. Your spirit is meant to lead. That's the way you feel, that's what you want to experience when your soul is still overshadowing your spirit and your body. That's where dividing soul and spirit has to come in. Because when your spirit is leading, it will take you in. And your soul will submit to what it experiences and it will begin to receive the download from your spirit man. This is very important. Becoming isolated and only going into heaven on your own. This is a major problem. We have to do this, not just at your, in your own time, in your own place, but you have to come together with saints. That's why it's a good idea to have a brother or sister that you can engage with, or a group of people that you can ascend with on Facebook. Or, and it sounds dangerous, but everything's not dangerous. You know, you have discernment. You're not retarded. Okay, we have the ability and the understanding to go and feel in your heart what's right and what's wrong. <coughs> and of course, we can also be led by the Spirit, right? But we have a family, a community of people um, in Picayune, in, 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 in uh, um, Slidell, in Covington, in Baton Rouge, in Denham Springs, in Lafayette, in Homer, in New Orleans. There's people that we can engage with that has the same mindset. 
Now, there's not many churches in here that we can just go to and ascend because they'll throw you out. But there's people that you know that you can call and say, hey, don't you want to do an ascension with me? Hey, don't you want to go in with me? I've experienced this and experienced that, but I'm not too sure what I'm feeling about. It doesn't feel right, but I really enjoyed it. It was a good experience. You want to go in with me and see what you can see in it? And that's a good idea. That's the way the Father's always wanted us to do. That's why it's two by two and not you by your lonesome and your only. Working as a body really helps and we need, to, we need agreement with others to form a window to translate this to earth. Makes sense, right? Of course, the fear of man, that's a major problem. Especially if we are high in a church, uh, leadership in a church, and the leadership does not cohere with what we believe. Then we can't talk to them about it. Because they will either want to throw you out of the church or they're going to tell you that you are um, in de you're deceived. But of course, fear of man is fear of uh, um, contributing, uh, which basically means unless you don't want people to mock you or correct you that doesn't know anything about what you're doing. You know, if I say in a meeting, you know, I, I, I go into the spirit where my soul and my body is still functioning on the earth, what everyone else here says, he's leaving his body and um, going into another realm, which is demonic, which is not of God, because that's what the New Agers do. You should not leave your spirit. You should not travel in the spirit, because that's not what we perceive. And of course, that's not quite what we do, but that is what we do, but not in the mindset of what the church believed. So then I get messages like, you're deceived, don't teach the church that. You need to maybe go sit with God and get yourself right because this doesn't sound like a God teaching. This is man-made and it's from new age perspective. But then I have to make a decision. You know, I know what my mentors have taught me. I know what I've experienced. I know what I've seen. I believe and have confidence in what the Father has revealed to me because the revelation I walk in goes hand in hand with a word that I've studied and meditated on for many, many, many years of my life. It's not just something that I heard and thought, oh, that's a good idea, let me start talking about it. No, I've heard it, then I studied it and engaged it in the Word. Exciting, right? Fear of man will prove to be a snare, right? We are powerful sons who have a right to speak and to learn. We have to be willing to make mistakes. You know, I always say this, Alexander Bell uh, did not at his first try invent the telephone. Don't look at me with that time. Uh, what's the guy who did the, um, the light bulb? Edison. Edison. He, makes a, he makes a statement where he says he, he made uh, thousands of thousands of mistakes until he got it right. But every mistake took him closer to the truth. And I can guarantee you if you speak to Alexander about he did the same thing. I mean, you cannot just try something and get it right immediately. There's going to be error in what you do. And of course, the church, for some reason, thinks that if there's error, it has to be satanic and demonic. So we keep it to the basics. Let's preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can't go wrong with preaching Jesus Christ. And so we have a half-hearted message given with the right intention, with purity, but without a fear of being in deception. This is saying... And I want to go almost as far as to say it's Bill Johnson that says it, but I don't want to accuse somebody of anything because I honor him and love him. But he says, everybody has error in their theology. But that doesn't change the love that I carry for Yeshua. You say, well, I don't want to be part of anything that has error. Well, then you're going to have to die. Because while you're alive, there'll be something that's attached in some way, fashion, or form, that's not 100% pure truth. Not just in the fact that what I perceive it to be, but in the heart and hand of Yahweh. We've believed certain things for years. Now we come to the conclusion, oh, that was wrong. So was I in deception? Was I deceived all my life? No, that was a measure of the truth that revelation is progressive. Because revelation is progressive. What I believe today, I might not believe tomorrow. And we have to be open enough and to love Yahweh and know Him well enough to see that there's error or what I have thought was right is wrong, but I'm going to a different level as I walk deeper in truth. It's about faith. It's about understanding and believing. Fear of heresy. I might, 
in, I, I might be misled, more likely in heresy by not investigating things as open debate that reduces heresy. That's why it's important to be part of a group of people. Being alone on your own is a problem. You know, doing your own thing is a problem. That's why we come together in the schools. And that's why we have the heavens, heavens fire every six months to come together. I'm telling you, on Saturday it's going to be incredible to have everybody from all the different schools there. Because it's like-minded. So you're going to find the teachings are going to be incredible. Now I'm putting going up by faith with some of the guys that I teach because I don't know what, I've never heard some of them preach. But I know the Father has shown me in the Spirit that they are led by His glory and fire. Now, of course, I'm not talking about Mike. I'm not talking about, but, 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 I'm not talking about anybody. I know it's going to be incredible. And I know it's going to bless us. So I would urge you to come because it is us coming together to work things out and to put things into place. That's exciting, right? Fear of letting our imagination be free. That's a major setback. Because we're afraid of what we're seeing, because what I see might just be me. Because we have this fantasy problem. Because we are so used to, because previously, uh, not engaging the imagination, we engage the fantasy of our lives. Right? Our lust, our perversion, things that we desire, things that we want, instead of activating the soul sight. The soul sight's your imagination. So when I activate my imagination and I walk, work it in full, full force, operating in the full freedom of my imagination, it can change doorways and open up gates. But if I'm afraid to let it go, uh, I will find myself that this is a problem in my life. It will be a gate that shuts my entrance. But we have an understanding that we enter in as a little child, consumed with faith. Right? You know, I love, I say to my, I joke to my kids sometimes, they say, where are we going, Dad? And I'll say, we're going to the moon. That's it. They want to go to the moon. And what I have to explain to them, well, I was just joking. You can't really just go to the moon. You know, it's not like we get into the car and we drive somebody. To get to the moon, you have to fly in a, in a highly developed spaceship that we don't have. No, but Daddy, you said. <laughs> so watch what you say, right? But it's that faith. Well, you said, let's go to the moon, let's go to the moon. You know, you say, well, let's go to heaven, let's go to heaven. Let's use your imagination, let's use our imagination. That's the faith of a child. Lack of excellence. Saying it's okay to be different. Expressions of church. So miss the biblical heavenly blueprint. See, remind yourself that this is not being different. This is moving on from an old system. Because I, I remember this very funny. I, it, well, it was funny to me. It was more like, uh, can I slap you? But I'm not going to because I'm not like that anymore, but I would like to. Um, lady at the gym, very excited to watch my videos. And uh, after she started watching a couple, she came to me and she said, um, you know, it's a little bit different than what I'm used to. How did you get into this? I said, well, first of all, it's not something I got into. It's something you grow into. But it's, not, it's not a different, it's not an occult. It's not a different belief system. It's not a new religion. It's a higher level to what we have right now. It's a different place to where the church is. It's a shift from one, one level to another. And we need to understand that. It's not, it's not uh, 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 um, being different or trying to be something else. It's going deeper into the Father. Allowing that which He's opened up to really overshadow me and for me to go into it. <laughs> People are funny. We have to let go of the old to form a new community. And that's tough. What I, what I suggest, and this is what I kind of always wanted people to understand, it's okay to be part of more than one community. I mean, if you understand that. You have a family, which for me personally, I've been in one church since I got born again. Um, well, I got born again and I was taken to uh, Little Falls Christian Church. That's uh, the mother church that everything I've ever done in the faith was birthed out of. Um, 
So I did their Bible school. They sent me to Cape Town. They um, blessed our coming to America. We're still part of that family. That's my mother church. My pastor, Harold Weitz, is still my pastor. Pastor Stephen Lumbrach, all the other pastors. That was there. There's 20 pastors and their wives. They're still my pastors. I still love them. I still honor them. They are my community. But I have a different community here in America. I don't have to be associated with them all the time. The community I'm part of now is what I teach. It's my students. It's you guys. That's my community. That's the, the fellowship that I would rather be in than anywhere else in the world. I refuse to go to a church that's in the old stream. Now, if they ask me to come preach, I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to cause havoc. Right? But that's why the Father said, have your own meetings. And that's what I'm doing. I have the meeting so I give you the opportunity to come so I can teach you what the Father has taught me. If I come to you, it's a whole different ballgame. Then I have to break into your belief system. I have to break into the church system. I have to break into what the pastor's taught. And of course, I don't want to bring division because the pastor hasn't changed his ways yet. He hasn't started teaching this yet. So I come in and everything I'm going to say is going to be against everything he said. And that causes problems. But the Father wants us to understand, in your community, in your church, in your mother church, if this is not a revelation, I'm not telling you to move. Stay there, but find another community in a different day of the week that doesn't affect your Sunday, doesn't affect your Wednesday, so that you can be part of a company of people that believe the same as what you do, so that you don't feel deceived, so that you don't feel that you're an error, and that they are telling you that what you believe is wrong, what you believe is demonic, you're an error. If you start teaching this, you're going to be a false teacher. That's not something you want to hear. That's going to affect your faith. It's going to affect your confidence. So be in a community that believes the same thing. The old, has, the old was having limited efforts, effects. We see that now because what we've experienced then, um, if we operate in the understanding we have now, things just start falling into place. What's, what's the previous... Uh, belief system, the previous age of Christianity wrong? Of course not. So don't misunderstand me. It was a lower level of truth. It was the, uh, uh, we're in a progressive dimension of revelation. So as we progress on in revelation, we can't hold on to what we had yesterday. That's what I always say. If you wake up tomorrow morning and you're the same as what you were yesterday, you're backsliding. Because revelation and moving into Christ is a deeper place every day. Deeper, wider, higher. Deeper, wider, higher into Him. Right? Trading on wrong platforms. Now we've done and exper expressed this before. The Ecclesia over the last 500 years have financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually traded onto the wrong platforms. I have reminded and spoken of this several times. Satan was a covering cherub. How many of you understand that? Well, what the covering cherub would do is there's two of them, they touch wings, but they stand over the, the, the Ark of the Covenant. Am I right? And in the presence and revelation and the fullness of Yahweh brings and, and explodes into them. And they go, holy, holy, holy. They're not saying, oh, you're so holy, you're so wonderful, you're so beautiful. They say, wow, I don't know what to do with all this revelation and insight coming from Yahweh. Right. And eventually they can't take it anymore. They would turn their wings and the revelation would reflect into creation. But when Satan fell, he took that revelation with him. Now we are trading on the wrong platforms for revelation and insight, and it coming from, it's coming from Him. That's why there's always a measure of truth in the ecclesia. There's a measure of truth in the things that we teach and preach. It's not the fullness, because we're trading into the wrong mountains. Yeah. We may even uh, be attending a church not based on good principles. Have you ever thought of that? Sometimes I go into church, now you have to understand, I go into a church with 13 years of theology training. I know in my own heart and perception, not to boast in anything that I am or who I am, but I know what's right and wrong in the ecclesia. I know what's a good idea and what's a bad idea. I know what's right and what's not. I know what's fake and what's not fake. I remember going to a church, and I've shared this before, and it, really, it didn't bother me too much. I love God's people, and error is okay. I can deal with error. It's the flesh I have a problem with, but I can even deal with the flesh. And I remember two prophets going on to the stage. One was the pastor, one was an elder in the church. 
the pastor started prophesying, and in my spirit I knew every word that comes out of his mouth right here, right now, and it's just to impress, and it's coming out of his soul and his flesh. Now it sounded good, but I could hear it wasn't right. When the other man started speaking, the elder, he was a prophet speaking as an oracle of Yahweh. And I remember even in, in, in my congregation, there's two ladies shaking, laughing, rolling, and I go up in my discernment to the one I said, stop it. And she stopped and said, I'm sorry, sir. Because she faked it. But the other one wasn't faking it. Now, I did that in my discernment and understanding as who, who we are in Christ. Because now that's what happens in the church. I, I spoke to a guy the other day, and I said, why do you always fall in church? He said, it's called courtesy fall. Because you have to. You know, that's what the pastor expects. So you go into that church and everyone's lying on the floor. And you go in there with the wrong understanding. It's like, oh, wow, Holy Spirit's all over the place. It's incredible. Let's start speaking to the people that's lying on the floor. Why did you fall? Well, I don't know. That's what you do. There's someone to catch me. I'm going to be okay. I mean, there has to be at least two people behind me before I fall. And it's not going to be courtesy fall, let me tell you that. In, in, in South Africa, we don't worry about people suing you because that is insane. A friend of mine, she says to me, she got, went to a, uh, um, a, a summer camp where uh, she was just one of the leaders there. And so one of the kids really, he had a, a, um, a chronic disease. And I don't know exactly what it was, but she prayed for him and he got completely healed. And the parents came and complained uh, by the leaders of that camp to such an extent that she got fired because they said, we have had to deal with this for such a long time. Now that it's not there anymore, we don't know what to do. Anyway, in South Africa, we had this rule. There's no one to catch you. If you fake it, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> that was our church. Other churches, they have catchers. Uh, my pastor just believed, if you're going to fake it, and I remember, we had church on a floor like this. And I remember we prayed for this one lady, and she fell to that ground like a sack of potatoes. And we even heard the clash. You're thinking, oh, she's dead. It's the end. We're waiting for the blood to start flowing. She got up there. She did not have a scratch on her, not a bump on her head. Anyway, let's not go into too much detail. I remember one other friend of mine, he says to me, Gustav, you know the smell of uh, smoke out of a smoke machine? Everybody knows that smell. I mean, if you, you if we go into Walmart, it's there because they now have the the smoke machines all over the place for um, Halloween. And I remember him telling me he was sitting in church and the smoke started slowly come out onto the stage and the pastor jumped up and said, it's the glory, it's the glory of God. He's coming into us, he's coming into this place, his presence is evident. But it was a smoke machine. Justin Abraham talks about something that offended him so intensely here in America. He says he comes into a meeting as one of the guest speakers and there's diamonds and rubies all over the floors. And they have said that it's from heaven. When they gave him a little bag of it, I'm mean, talking about big conferences, a lot of people. So there's a lot of diamonds and rubies and gold. And so they give him a bag of, uh, of these emeralds or little stones and he could see the manufacturing uh, mistakes on it. He actually went as far as to Google it on um, Amazon and found that it was $5 just for a little bag like that. Now, we shouldn't do things like that, right? I would urge you not to be part of anything like that. And again, again, it's just because we so desperately want it. So that's error, but is that, is that really that bad? Yes, I, I guess in a manner, yes it is, but look at the heart. You know, we are so easy to judge to death, but the father looks at that and he says, that's both cute, but let's not do that again. He's full of mercy and grace. Yes, yes. Stubbornness to change. Always done it this way or that way, but we have to understand, if you want change, you have to change. Right? You can't do something the same way and expect different results. That's called ins insanity. <laughs> Wanting the blessing for our own circumstances, so not helping others, not sharing. I remember when I just started listening to Ian Clayton, 
It was so incredible. It was so amazing. And I just got it immediately. I could just engage it. And I could find myself going into these different places. And I didn't want to tell anybody. I don't want to tell anybody where I heard it from. Because I didn't want them to go listen to him and then experience it as well. I felt so spiritual. You know, of course, I was a pastor at this stage. And everyone was so amazed. What happened? Such a change in your way of preaching. Eventually, the father had to correct me and say, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it's pride that overtakes us so easily. But when I started sharing everything, I started opening up revelation, just poured in. When I started taking um, what I knew and what I had, and I started giving it to others, sharing the, 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 the um, links on, on YouTube, uh, sharing his... Uh, but it was mo mainly on uh, a company of Burning Hearts. Most of Ian's teachings was on there at that stage. Now he's got his own website and some on YouTube. I know he's taken everything off of YouTube and he's cre they created another website where you could go and listen to the messages by obviously sowing or trading into it. But at that stage, there was nothing available really all that much except on the, the, the um, company of Burning Hearts uh, website. And so I eventually started sending my my, my uh, leaders and the people that I knew was hungry for this to these sites. But before that, I just wanted to keep it for myself. Get away from me! <laughs> Exciting, right? Not taking authority over familiar spirits when it has already been dealt with in a courts. Remind yourself that Satan hates the fact that you're going in. And he'll do everything in his power to prevent you from going back. He will make you feel deceived. He will, it will uh, come in and stop what you were doing. And also remind yourself that if your gates are not cleaned out, He has access to your thought patterns. And that's when you start feeling condemnation. Uh, that's the problem, so we need to go into the courts and deal with this as often and as quick as we possibly can. When we know our mandate, we are safe to take authority. Um, understand one of the one of the problems is that we don't take authority that we are given and we are holding back for the fear of the enemy you know there's no fear there's no need for you to be afraid of the enemy in any way fashion or form understand that when you operate in the kingdom of heaven he can't go there he does not have access right so when you're in the kingdom of heaven what you're experiencing is almost 99.999% guaranteed it's from Yahweh but of course, it's outside of our box of theology of revelation. So that's why it's a good idea to be in the company of others. So that you can know that what you're experiencing is from God. Because you're not going to read what you experience word for word in the Bible. There's going to be traces of it because the Father won't overshadow His word. But He will always overshadow your perception of the word. Because no matter how much you've studied it or meditated on it, there's a, a perception we have, because it comes out of the Greek mindset, that, uh, that does not overshadow the Hebrew perception of what He originally intended for it to be. Because we, we study the word in English, and English is not a living word. It's not a living letter. It's not a living language. For example, what does A mean in the English language? Nothing. Has no meaning. B has no meaning. C has no meaning. You have to put the letters together and spell something that then has a meaning according to what you spelled. But the Hebrew letters are completely different. It's living beings, and each of the letters has a dimension to it. <coughs> that you get to go into and engage. Exciting, right? Not building up your spirit man enough. We've, we've taught on that, building your spirit man. Engaging in the Word, worship, praying in the Spirit. For, um, uh, being in the midst of those like-minded. Iron sharpens iron. Um, those type of things. Thinking we need to understand the theology and or science first before seeking intimacy. You cannot think that you're going to first understand this before you engage in it. If you have that mentality, I want to guarantee you that you're not going in. <coughs> because this is not a time for us to understand everything before we engage in it. Engage in it and there will be understanding. <coughs> for example, the Old Testament fathers never had a Bible or science lessons. They didn't know any of this stuff. They didn't have something to go back to, but they engage and experience everything. Just like what? Just like we do. Look at Enoch. Look at Moses. Look at Elijah and Elijah. They've done things that we can't even begin to fathom. But there was no Bible for them to read. 
They had an intimate relationship with the Father, and heavens opened up for them. This is very important. Employing experts to take us into heaven or to do court cases regularly instead of learning to do it ourselves. Uh, we will do it every now and then in class, but it's your responsibility to go do it yourself. Error is no problem in the courts. It's your daddy. <laughs> He's not going to curse you. He's not going to cuss at you. He's not going to throw you out. He's not going to get you arrested when you do something wrong. He's going to say, okay, well, that works for now because I love you, but let's just look at protocol next time. I'll teach you as we go along. But keep coming in. Keep doing it like this. Because as you go deeper, you'll begin to understand and see what needs to be done, how it needs to be done for you to get the full result as we desire it. Exciting, right? So there's just a couple of things that we need to look at, little things that we need to focus at, so focus on, because I've looked back over the years and I thought to myself, you know, there's so much, and I listen to my sons and my daughters and the ones that I love that really caught this, running with it, and every now and then I'll hear, oh, I'm struggling to go in, oh, this is struggling, I'm doing this, this is not working for me anymore, and... Uh, this is obviously the thing that we need to look at. This is ways that we can open these gates so that we can confidently find ourselves uh, at a pure place in the heavenlies where all these stumble, stumbling blocks have been removed. Let's stand up. Let's do an activation prayer. For we need pure access, clean, clean slate to go deeper into what you have for us, Father. And of course, we've gone through a list of so many things that can prevent us from going in, that can stop us from accessing the fullness. So what we want to do tonight, Father, is we just want to open up those doors. We want to come and we want to remove all these, these obstacles, these stumbling blocks that prevents us from progressing in the heavenly realms. So ask, Father, that you'll open our hearts, our minds, Father, and reignite with your fire inside of us, Father. Give us a new passion to run into the things that's available. Let's begin to believe. Let's begin to perceive, Father. Let's engage as friends and family, Father. Let's go to different ascension groups. Let's understand that when we engage and we go and experience something, share it. And, and share it with the right people. Don't share it with your pastor or one of your leaders or, or even members in your church if they don't believe the same thing as you. Because there's a level of revelation and you have to stay at the level where you at. You move down a bit, you're going to bring confusion. You move down a bit and they're going to tell you you're deceived. But you want to move up in the line of revelation so people can tell you that is awesome. I experienced the same thing. You know, I remember reading a book five years ago, and that book made not much sense. I enjoyed it. It was great. But now that I've experienced all those things, I read that book again. It blows my mind. The same thing in the Word. As you grow in the Word, you're going to get, begin to get deeper revelation. And the same scriptures are going to change because revelation is progressive. And so, Father, as we get to go into the heavens, we get to experience you. I pray, Father, that as we grow deeper, higher, wider, and things start changing, that our belief system will ignite, that the things that blocks us will fade out and we'll begin to go deeper and begin to understand and have greater revelation as we receive these things and begin to activate our spirit man into the earth, into the heavens, into the cosmos, Father God, into all creation and start aligning things into the kingdom of heaven, into the heavens of heaven and begin to understand who we are and what we need to be doing to bring things back into full alignment and place. As we are to govern, Father, teach us and propel us deeper. We love you, my King. In the name of Yeshua. Amen.